Hi, the Stream Chat Swift UI SDK allows you to swap system provided components with custom made Swift UI views. This video will help you understand how to make your Stream Chat Swift UI app stand out by modifying the channel list components like the navigation bar, top bar, sticky footer, and the non sticky footer. Let's begin. So, the screen you see on the left will be our startup project. The SDK provided channel list consists of the header, the top bar, channel list items, non sticky footer, and the sticky footer. We can remove the components in all these sections and place custom Swift UI views into their slots. The screen you see on the right is the final project. It has a segmented control and toolbar items in the header slot. The search bar has been replaced with a custom scrollable Swift UI view. We will put a button in the non sticky footer section. The sticky footer section will have a tab bar that resembles the tab bar in WhatsApp on iOS. So the Xcode project structure has four main items the main Swift UI app. The app delegate, which connects the Stream Chat Swift UI SDK to the Swift UI app. We will create a Swift file, custom UI factory, and connect it to the main Swift UI app. We will then create a folder to hold all the custom Swift UI views. Using Xcode 13, I created a blank Swift UI project called Channel List Theming and fetched the SDK from GitHub. So we have the main Swift UI file. Then I added app delegate that connects to the stream chat Swift UI SDK. In the assets folder, I added few thumbnails that will be displayed in the UI. After fetching the SDK from GitHub, all the dependencies will be shown under package dependencies. So in this tutorial, I do not cover how to set up the SDK. Luckily, we have a tutorial on our website. So you can check build a Swift UI chat messaging app to learn about how to fetch the SDK from GitHub and set it up with your Swift UI project. You can also watch the video how to add a real-time chat messaging to your Swift UI app. This video also shows you how to get the Swift UI SDK from GitHub and how to set it up for your Swift UI project. So this screen is the uncustomized or the default channel list screen. It has a title in the header. Below the header is the top bar and that contains the search field. Then we have the list items. Below the list items, there are also non-sticky and sticky footers. These areas don't display by default because we have nothing in those areas. In the customized channel list screen, the header has been replaced with a segmented control and two bar items. Below the header is the top bar. It also has a custom Swift UI view containing an image and text. When you scroll the list items to the end, we also display a button. This area is the non sticky footer section. So the button disappears once the list items finish loading. And below the non sticky footer, we also have the sticky footer. So the sticky footer section contains a compose button and a tab bar. So basically, this is the screen we are going to build in this video. So in this tutorial, we will cover how to change the no channels view. We will customize the background of the channel list. Then we will add a custom list row separator. We will also swap the channel list header and add a custom made top view. Then we will insert a vertical button at the top of the list. We will also add a sticky and non sticky footer items below the list. And finally, recap. To customize the channel list components, you should create a custom view you want to use for the replacement and implement its function in one of the SDK's protocol called View Factory. The view factory allows swapping of components in the SDK. So the first thing we need to do is to add the view factory. 
by selecting any of the files in the navigator. I will control click and select new file. I will change this to Swift file. And next, I will name this file as Custom UI Factory. In Custom UI Factory, we will import Swift UI, Stream Chat, and Stream Chat Swift UI. The only requirement of the View Factory is to create an instance of Stream Chat Client using Views injection. Then we will define all the functions for the components that need to be customized. So let's add a class Custom UI Factory that conforms to the View Factory in the SDK. Then we add the following. This is an instance of the Stream Chat Client. Then we have a variable for the Custom UI Factory we just added. The first customization we will do is to change the No Channels view. Let's see how it looks. To preview the No Channels view, I'll go to App Delegate. In the App Delegate, we have an API key that connects to the SDK. So let's change this value. Changing the hard-coded API key, we are making the channels unavailable. So let's run the app. To customize this screen, we will use an SVG image which is now in the assets folder. And then we will also add a custom text. Before we do that, let's add a folder to hold all the custom Swift UI views. By right clicking this file, we can choose new group. We will call it custom Swift UI views. Inside this folder, I will add eight other folders. The purpose here is to separate each of the customization tasks into its own folder. Let's select the folder No Channels View, Control Click, and choose New File. We will add a new Swift UI file and call this No Channels Yet. In this file, we will add a text and a custom SVG image to be displayed for the No Channel view. So let's add an image view. In the Assets folder, we can find the name of the image, Empty Channels. The image is bigger than the screen, so we can use the Resizable modifier to change its size. Then we can set the aspect ratio to fit. And that puts the image at the center of the screen. Next, we can embed the image in a VStack and place a text below that. Since we are using a wrong hard-coded API key, this image and the text will be displayed for the no channel screen. So we have already created a custom view factory. Now the Swift UI app needs to know about this UI factory. When we go to the main Swift UI file, it uses chat channel list view to display the channel list screen. So we can override this to use our custom view factory like this. And then we remove this one. That is the default implementation. So this tells the Swift UI app to use our custom view factory instead of displaying the default channel list screen to be able to see the custom no channels view we just added. We need to add its implementation in the custom view factory using the method make no channel view. So let's go to custom view factory and add its implementation here. I will add the function make no channels view. This conforms to some view. So it is a normal Swift UI view. Then the code we need to add here is this file. No channels yet. We can now go ahead and run the app. And that displays our custom no channels view. Let's go back 
change the API key again to as it was. If you run the app again, we should get the default screen. The next customization is about changing the channel list background. You can replace the background of the channel list with a solid color or gradient. So let's add a new file and add a gradient view to the file. In the project navigator, we will select the background folder, control click and choose new file. Then we will call this file background view. Let's run the code again and see how the background looks like. So we have a plain background. So let's put the gradient behind the channel list items. Let's create a gradient called orange green. We will define it as a constant. By going to the objects library, we can search for gradient and drag a linear gradient to the code. Let's change the first color to orange. Then for the second color, we will change it to green. The start point will be the top leading and the end point will be bottom trailing. So we can now remove the text here and bring the gradient. Let's reduce the opacity. We can use an opacity of 0 0.25. And then we want it to occupy the entire screen so we can add the modifier edges ignore safe area. Let's set it to all. So we have the gradient to occupy the entire screen of the device. In our custom view factory, we should implement make channel list background to see the custom background. So let's add the function make channel list background and make it conform to a standard Swift UI view. So in the closure, we will bring the file background view. So this is how to implement the custom background view in the view factory. Let's run the app again to see the implementation in action. We now have a background that transitions smoothly from orange to green. Previously, we changed the background of the channel list to a gradient. The line separators presented above each row can be removed or customized. To substitute them with a custom divider, we need to create a new file, custom list row separator. So let's go to the folder, list row separator and add a new file. We can name this file custom list row separator and click create. Let's define the width of the list row separator. So we use the width of whatever device we select. Then we also want to use the gradient we created previously for the background. So let's copy this and paste it here. We can remove the text and draw a rectangle. We can fill the rectangle with the gradient we just added. Let's add the frame modifier and set the width and height of the divider. The width will have the device width. Then we set the height to one. We can remove the alignment parameter. Let's also add the blend mode modifier and set it to screen. And that makes it disappear because we have a white background, but that will appear in the list. By putting a comment here, it shows again. To implement the divider in the custom view factory, we should use make channel list divider item. So let's go to the view factory and add the function. So let's add func make channel list divider item. And that conforms to some view. In the closure, we need to add the file custom list row separator. Let's run the app again to see what we have done. 
they appear in white color because of the blend mode. So to see them clearly, we can remove the blend mode. For example, put in comment here and run the code again. So we now see the gradient transitioning from orange to green. In some situations, you may not need the list row separator at all. So we can hide it completely using an empty view. So let's put a comment here and add an empty view. You can now see we have removed the divider separating the list items. Our next modification will be adding a custom made channel list header. The customized channel list header has three items, an edit button on the left, segmented control at the center, and a call icon on the right. To populate the channel list navigation with your own, you should use a view that conforms to the standard SwiftUI toolbar content protocol. So in the folder channel list header, we are going to create two files, custom channel header and channel list header modifier. So let's control click this folder and add a new file. I will select Swift UI view and click next and name this as custom channel header. So this file should contain the Swift UI views you want to use for the swapping. Let's create the second file, channel list header modifier. In custom channel header, let's replace the content with this code. In this file, we import stream chat Swift UI. We create instances of the font and images provided by the SDK using injection. We have a variable for the title and another variable to handle tap event of the left button on the toolbar. The segmented control also has two items, all calls and missed calls. So we use this state variable call type to switch between all calls and missed calls. So the body must conform to the toolbar content protocol. And inside the toolbar content, we have three items. At the central part, we have the segmented control. So that is a picker with the style set to segmented. On the right side, we have another toolbar item, which is a phone icon. Then on the left hand side, we have another button that is the edit button I showed in the image previously. So this is the content for custom channel header. Let's move to channel list header modifier and replace the content with this code. So here we create a struct custom channel modifier that conforms to the channel list header view modifier in the SDK. Then we add a variable for the title. When you tap the edit button on the left side of the toolbar, we use the state variable edit shown to present a sheet. We can now go to the custom view factory and implement the custom header. So here I'm going to add this function, make channel list header view modifier. Let's run the app to see the changes. You have noticed we have the edit button the segmented control and the call icon in the header. Above the channel list items is the top view. It houses the search bar. So in this section, we will substitute the search functionality with a Swift UI composition, similar to the user's online section in Facebook Messenger. So we are going to replace the search bar functionality with this view. Let's select the top view folder and begin by adding the file user online view. I will select the code and replace the content with this code. So this code creates a horizontal scroll view of users online. We should specify in the custom view factory that we want to swap the SDK's top view with the content of users online view. So let's go to the view factory and paste this code. We implement this using make channel list top view. Then in some view, we use the user online view. Let's run the code again to see the implementation. We now have the users online view just below the header. As you can see from this screen, 
the vertical space between the channel list items and the top view is very small. The SDK allows you to add a specified amount of pattern to widen the vertical space using the vertical pattern view modifier. So let's look at what we are going to do. So using the vertical pattern view modifier, we can widen this space as illustrated in this image. To do that, we will select the folder below top view and add the file vertical pattern view. In this file, we will import stream chart Swift UI. So the vertical pattern view modifier is a struct that conforms to the view modifier. So let's create the struct vertical pattern view modifier. We should conform to the view modifier. So in the closure, we can add the function body and pass the standard Swift UI content as a parameter. We can now bring the content and add modifiers to the content. So let's add the pattern modifier. Then we are interested only in the vertical pattern. Let's set it to, for example, 100. Next, we should register vertical pattern view in the custom view factory by placing it inside the vertical pattern slot using the method make channel list modifier. So let's go to our custom view factory and paste this code. Let's now run the app to see the changes. You can now see the gap between the channel list items and the top view widens. Let's reduce the gap to, for example, eight. Below the channel list items, there are two footer components. There are sticky and non-sticky footers. The non-sticky footer appears above the sticky one. So this button appears at the non-sticky section, whilst the compose button and the tab bar appears at the sticky section. The button in the non-sticky section only appears when we scroll to the bottom of the list. So let's preview to see what we have in the non-sticky footer section. There is nothing there. So to add content to this section, we create a new file. Jump to top button view. I will select the folder, non-sticky folder. Control click and add a new file. It has to be a Swift UI view. I will name this file. Jump to top button view. Let's remove the text and add a button. The button label will contain an SF symbol, which is an arrow icon and text. The button uses the plain button style, but we can override that using the button style modifier. And then we set it to bordered prominent. So we have now created a button that can be tapped to jump to the top part of the screen. To implement the button in the custom view factory, we need to use make channels footer view. So let's add the function make channel list footer view. So let's change this to some view. Then in the closure, we need to use the file jump to top button view. We can now run the app to see the changes. So once we scroll to the end, we see the button. Then it disappears when the items finish loading. Our last modification is about adding content to the sticky footer section. The sticky footer component of the SDK appears beneath the non-sticky footer. It makes its content stick to the bottom part of the channel list screen. When the list items are scrolled, the content in the sticky footer section will still remain. So this section has a tab bar and a compose button. Let's begin with the compose button. By selecting the folder sticky footer, we will add the file Twitter compose button view. We want to paint the button with gradient. 
So let's go to the background view and use the same gradient we created before. So I will copy this gradient and paste it over here. Then I will remove the text and add an image. This will be an SF symbol. Let's change the font to large title. So we have the icon at the center of the screen. What we can do is to change the symbol rendering mode. I'm going to use Hierarchica. And that puts more focus on the plus inside the icon. We can paint the foreground of the symbol with the gradient we created using the foreground style modifier. That paints the symbol with the orange to green gradient. On this screen, you can see the icon appears at the bottom right. So what we can do is to embed the image in a horizontal container and use a spacer to push it to the right. So we can add a spacer on top of the image so that it will push it to the right since they are in an edge stack parent container. Next, we will add another file for the tab bar items. I will control click and add a new file. It has to be a Swift UI view. I will name this file as WhatsApp tab view. So in this file, we will have both the icon we just added and also the tab view. So we need to embed the content in a VStack. I will command click the text and embed in VStack. Then I will remove the text and bring Twitter Compose button view. Next, we can add the top view. Our top view has five items. So let's add them as tab items. We are not linking the tab items to anywhere. So I'm going to use rectangle for each of the items and add the tab item modifier. The first tab item will be a dashed circle. Since we have five items on the tab bar, I'm going to copy the first rectangle and paste four instances. Let's change each one of the instances. The first one will be calls. Then we will change the icon to a phone icon. The next one will be the camera. Then we have charts. For the charts, I will use the message icon. And the last one is the settings. For the settings, I will use the gear icon. The rectangle is taking the whole save area. So we can define the width and height of that using the frame modifier. So by selecting the top view, we can add the frame modifier. For the width of the top view, let's define a constant here. That will be the device width. So this will be the entire width of any device we select. Let's change the width to the device width we just defined. And then for the height, we will use 48 and remove the alignment parameter. So we now have five tab items and a compose button on top right of it. Now we need to place this file, WhatsApp tab view in the SDK's sticky footer slot using the function make channel list sticky footer view in the view factory. So let's go back to the custom view factory and implement this function. Let's add the function make channel list sticky footer view. In the closure, we need to pass WhatsApp tab view. And that is all we need to do in this video. So let's run the app again to see what we have done. So we have the compose button on the bottom right. 
and below that we have the tab view. So let's recap. In this video, we changed the channel list header. Below the header, we also placed a custom Swift UI view. Then we added pattern below the top view and the channel list items. When we scroll the list down, we added a button to the non-sticky section of the footer. In the sticky footer section, we added a compose button and a tab bar. You can find the completed project for this tutorial on GitHub. You can also check our documentation to learn more about how to customize the channel list screen. Thanks for watching this video.